Hello, welcome to Skull RPG Podcast. My name is Dwight Skull. My name is Jacob Skull. And today we're going to teach you how to tell, tell your, your story. story. So we alluded to this a little bit in the last episode. So traps and fights. Yeah. So one of the things that you can do, so I think a lot of people actually don't use traps in fights at all. And so what traps would you use? Well, I would use dart traps on pressure plates on the floor. I would use pit traps and spiked pit traps and even collapsing ceiling. You could have like a hammer or something swing down and tag them like a giant stone hammer. You might even have a fireball, like hey, yeah, fireball spell that goes off in a trap. Some flame traps in areas would not be bad. Basically anything that would be triggered or you could fall into in combat if you don't step in the right places. And then what you do is you set up your, your, your evil people in areas that would force fighters to run toward them, i.e. into a trap. And then have those characters, when you're moving them, why did they not just go straight towards the fighter and they did this weird L shape to get to the fighter? If they even move that way at all. And yeah. then you could have your characters do some intelligence checks on why did they not just rush here? There must be something there. Yeah. The other thing you can do with it, which is kind of a nasty little deal, you could actually use something like a, a trap that is designed not to go off on a pressure plate at the person who stepped on the pressure plate. It's a trigger. But it's a trigger event. Oh, so, hey, your fighter fell into a pit trap in a five-foot corridor. That sent a trigger to all those people, and now you're in an ambush, and your fighter's down a five-foot pit, a ten, five to ten-foot pit. So he can, has to yep. climb himself out, but because of where the... Because where the pit is, it takes it takes your uh, meat shield out of the picture for a round or two. Yep. Which makes that CR level... A little, little, little bit higher now. Yes. Oh, the other thing you can do with it is you want to have a kind of a spellcaster in the room, but you don't want to roll up a spellcaster. So what if, there's a, what if there's some sort of fireball trap, but it's set up so that the person at the back of the room hits a... Hit, basically hit, stamps on the um, thing, and the fireball trap shoots from above... Mm -hmm. And it hits everybody at the beginning of the, yep. in the, in the very it, start of the map, not the delayed where he is. pressure plates. So if, if you're in, part, in party order, by the time you get to here, it triggers. So now you're hitting or the that's wizard one. or your cleric or, or something. I'm just saying, like, it's at the other end of the room. Yeah. And the guy triggers it just to hit the begin the first part of the room mm -hmm. when everybody's walked in. And so it's basically like a, it's a trap. And one that could be disabled, but again, you're in a fight mode, so you're not looking for traps, right? Yep. And it's a fight, and it's a, and it's basically triggered on the other side of the room to basically hurt people walking into a room. So you could do that with a dart trap. You could do that with a anything that's a kind of projectile slash magic projectile type of deal. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing you could do is you could actually have a trigger plate that goes that uh, creates an anti magic field in the very beginning of the room as well. <laughs> So it renders the spellcasters pointless. Until they get into the room enough for the magic field. And by then, a lot of your good spells are like a fireball is kind of worthless because nobody's bunched up anymore. Right. Well, I'm just saying, like, yeah. like they walk in there. So you walk in the room, somebody hits a lever, the door now seals. And then someone else hits a lever, and the anti-magic field kicks on for those at the beginning. It was like the first 30 feet of the room. Yep. And then all of a sudden you're getting pelted by... You know, arrows and stuff. Uh-huh. Which, if they were going through the mag anti-magic field, like, they might extinguish or whatever if they're not real, like, I actually dip these in oil and lit them on fire type of arrows. So you could come up with some really nasty little, like, death trap scenarios. And again, you don't want to then set the monster levels at the same level as your character because each one of these traps I mentioned is going to start adding CR. Like Two to no three tomorrow. challenge rating, I would say, depending on what you're throwing at them. Especially the anti-magic field, I would That's drop just it so by nasty. two to three <laughs> challenge ratings. Because all your all your armor becomes unmagical, too. And your weapons. And your weapons. And... It's everything on you. It's just yeah. no longer as long as you're in that field. Hey, you know that amulet and armor? It's gone. Yeah, your AC's gone. Thanks. You know that plus one armor? Yeah, you lose plus like, one to your AC. That's that would gone. be nasty for our fighters right now, just because oh, yeah. they have the animated full tower shield. So that's like yeah, six AC gone. Yeah, the, the tower shield falls to the ground and a big, really noisy clang. Um, I mean, there's so many things. If you had an animated sword, drop. the same thing. I mean, there's so many different things that would happen um, that would be really kind of funny to happen. But you definitely don't want to put like a now a challenge rating, like if they're all level eight again. You don't want to put a challenge rating eight monster when you do that. You'll probably want to put some monsters that add up to a challenge rating five. Because or, that's just nasty. 
or even at a challenge rating eight. Oh, hey, there's like sixty fighters, like sixty level one fighters that can barely hit with a bow. Yeah, which right. all of you fun. guys, even though that you guys are non magical, the you might be able to hand a sword to the wizard, and the wizard might actually be able to kill these guys in one hit just because yeah. of how low their HP is. But. <laughs> But there's some traps between you and them still, you know, yep. so there's some funny things you can do with it. Um, I don't want to belabor the point on this, but I do want to say that um, traps are really underutilized. <clears throat> one other one I do want to talk about, cover. Yes. Cover is underutilized as well. Definitely. So <clears throat> think about full cover, think about half cover, think about arrow slits. Think about arrow slits would be nasty in some night ne- some five foot corridors that you don't know about trap triggers and then arrows from, or just uh, archers uh-huh. in the aerosmith in the, in a different room, but there's arrow slits in the wall that allow them to attack. Yep, they would have pretty much total cover, and um, you know it'd be really hard to get to them. So unless you found the secret passage to the to their area, and it could not even be in that room. It could be like three corridors down. Yep. It just winds back through their barracks and they just kind of line up here and make it like this death trap of anyone walking in. And then you add it, that, that in itself almost acts as a trap. Yes. You know, even though it's a human or whatever trap, it's a, it's, a, it's not a triggered event. It's a, a, a smart trap. It's, you know, but think about also the traps in terms of that, like a strategic trap. You know, not necessarily like it's in the DMG, but like they they do things so that it looks, it's a trap, you know. Yeah. And then also the other thing you can think about as well is if this is an area that keeps getting raided by their players and they're gone for a certain amount of time, is there ways that people would, those people to help barricade areas, do some barricades or some very crude traps that aren't as good. So they're a little bit flimsier, but they still get the job done. Well, yeah, As you, you keep could going have, through. Well, you could get total cover from a movable wooden wall. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to survive like a like if somebody cast a fireball at it, you'd have to roll to see how much of that thing survived I it. Mean, but I mean, uh, it's still there. I mean, even just the di- even just their mess hall table flipped up is an, is partial cover. cover. Yeah. Or even full cover because then you could just use that as a shield that you're getting yeah. closer towards. Yeah. And just try to push them out the table. Three three guys pick up the table and start running with it. I mean uh-huh. that's that's a I mean, improvise something is fun. I mean, so anyway. That's it. So just think about ways that you're as a GM you could really turn the tables, pun intended, on them and see what you can do. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, thanks for listening. And for more resources, please go to SkullRPG.com.